Afton, I love your name, Afton. Wow. Thank Can you. I have it? <laughs> well, now I'm using it. Okay. <laughs> you know, I don't want to get too out there on, on you, but the idea of having multiples inside ourselves, like in a trench coat or in our body and mind is a major subject in art and literature and philosophy through the ages, you know, Walt Whitman, Picasso, all these people. And there you are. What a brilliant idea and how very personal and, and yet worldwide it, its response must be. Tell me about coming up with that idea. Thank you. I mean, I think um, when I came up with this idea, I think there's this feeling we all have um, of how we're supposed to act as an adult. And then, you know, you're in a room or something and you say something snappy to someone and you're like defensive and you're like, where did that come from? And it's like, oh, it's 16 year old me in there still kind of lashing out, hasn't quite figured out how to, you know, be a bit more gracious or what have you. And, um, and I, I, it just, this idea, it, it came to me in a bunch of different places, but I think the, the main places um, I get, every time I have a birthday, there is this reflective moment where, you know, people ask you, uh, how do you feel? You know, you're at this, however many years old, do you feel different? And it was always like, no, of course not. And I think for me, it was like, I feel like I'm not getting older. I feel like I'm just getting more people in this trench coat that we're all, and we're all trying to steer it and they're all popping up at inconvenient times. And, uh, you know, I wish we could all just make the age that we're supposed to. And so that idea kept coming up and it was just so, so juicy and so fun to play around with. Yes. Yes. And, and a real sort of human question and issue. Um, you noted this morning when you uh, did a press conference that um, you felt when you were given the, uh, the opportunity to do a short after Seoul, you felt insecure and unsure of yourself. And you didn't know what to do. Well, I don't think you're like that. I think you've got a huge mind, a huge personality, and an eye. Do you feel better about your capabilities having seen what you produced? Thank you. I uh, I do. I think there's always the 16-year-old in there who's freaking out, though. Um, and I think it's just managing that voice. I Because I think for me, it was like, it's too soon. I've always wanted to direct, but for some reason, I was like, not yet, when they said it. And it's so, um, so silly, because I don't think they would have asked me if they thought I wasn't ready. But, um, you know, it's that little bit of fear. And that fear is usually always the thing that you should probably do. And so it's just finding a way to manage it. And uh, I managed it into putting it into my a film idea. And uh, yeah, processing all those. Uh, jitter. Yeah, it's terrific. And of course, uh, a lot of the humor comes from the visual of the different use stacked on each other's shoulders under this trench coat. It's hilarious. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. And I think it's inspired. So what about the trench coat tower? Well, you know, I have seen kids in a trench coat before, you know, passing off as an adult. And um, when really? I first, I, just here and there, you know, like a, a Little Rascals-esque. But, you know, it's four or five different kids. But the idea that they're all you felt like something that was very entertaining to me. Um, and it, it sold the imposter syndrome thing, I think, well, of like, we're hiding. We don't want anyone to know that we're, uh, they'll, they'll know that we're not, we don't have it together. And that felt like a, a, a clear way to do it. Because at one point I had this idea of like, you know, maybe she's turning into these different ages. Like she's going to shrink down and turn 10 and get bigger and turn 16. She'd be popping around the whole short. But there's something about the three of them all at once hiding and trying to steer that felt very uh, um, room for entertainment and, and humor and the bickering that could happen inside of that trench coat. Yes. And the visual of her walking to the door and suddenly what would normally be her rear end is way over here right. <laughs> and she's teetering <laughs> it's hysterical <laughs> it was it was so fun and so silly um to do these things and board it and be like oh maybe it's too silly and then people be like no I'll leave it and like okay okay and just listening to that instinct and going going for broke yeah dead on good girl and the scenes in the washroom are so funny because you've got um the baby baby crying you've got You've got all kinds of different ages out there knowing that they're, they're not being seen at the moment, being, being themselves. 
And uh, the whole thing is just ripe with comedy. And I think that's just, I think that's really a, your strength. Do you, do you agree with that? Or would you yeah, like yeah. some dra- dramas or? You know, when I first came here, I was like, I wanted a picture. I was like, I love action movies. I really love action movies. I grew up watching really old classic, uh, like, you know, Jackie Chan and, and uh, Bruce Terminator. And, uh, yeah, and I still love them. But my personality, I guess, tends to go more comedy. And it's it's always been uh, natural and easy. And nothing that I'll never challenge myself. But there is something very, uh, I guess I see life in a more humorous lens. And I remember as I was an intern pitching, um, you that's the one time people react. When you're pitching, you hear them laugh. And so it's like instant fuel. And so you're like, oh, and then you keep going and you get more excited and you want to do more jokes. So it feel, it's a fun space to be in and it's uh, relatable. Yeah. And you know, it, it spreads pleasure in the viewers mm-hmm. and that is so important, especially now. So it's, you know, good on you. Um, the, uh, the baby pictures that you showed, this, I, I found them really poignant. They really looked like your characters. And of course they were you. So you had a treasure trove to, to go to, to develop each of these yous. So that was, what else did you have? Did you have anyone talking about memories with you, family? Well, not a whole lot of uh, memories. I think I, for me, I, cause we, we did this so fast. So it was all me basically. I would have loved to sit and talk with people, but it was just kind of go, go, go. Um, and for me, it was trying to see <laughs> what, what uh, were pivotal ages. I mean, I don't remember one, but you know, it's your baby things are, I want this now. And I think that's an entertaining part of you as an adult that you have to, you know, manage. And like, if we're going to do the subconscious, that's like the id part of you where you have to kind of, you know, uh, put that in check. And then uh, for me, 16 was such a roller coaster of insecurity and very self-aware. And um, so that was one that I knew I had to like have in there. I was like, we have to have a teenager because I was so, you know, emotionally distraught. And I feel like every once in a while that emotion will come back up. And um, I guess if that were for continuing with this uh, logic, if that would be like the super ego side. And then 10 just felt like the age right before you hit your teens where you're like, I've got life figured out. Things are going pretty good. Right. I've mastered yes. it. And so, uh, so <laughs> at those three being pivotal, like what would they look like all together trying to control one person? Uh, how, how do we uh, create those three in the, in the trench coat? You know, it just occurred to me, have you ever seen the series Seven Up? No, I haven't. Up? It's a British documentary series. Every seven years, the filmmaker visits these kids and they're up in their 60s now. That would be so cool if you could, you know, in another 30 years, do, yeah. do another one. Well, because, you know, each year you learn, I mean, each, you learn something. You know, I just left my 20s, so it's 30s. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, not that I've mastered life now that I'm 30. It's like it's a whole other group that I'm sure I can't wait to meet. Yes. I think you'd have to be more like 50. <laughs> to do like the same kind of thing oh one thing I did yes. get from an editor she has uh, daughters and she has them in Girl Scouts and there was like a little breakdown for each Girl Scout and what they're going through and it was like brownies I don't know all the ages but like where they're at mentally six through uh six through eight or whatever. And it was so it's, that was another thing too, that I was able to look at and just help me kind of be like, okay, yeah, yeah. At 10, what am I doing at 10? What have I just learned, you know, and uh, putting that in there as well. It's, it's just, you've made the most amazing um, story of yourself, but also of us because it's the same for us, you know, at 16 Mm -hmm. and at 10, you know, it all. Yeah. I just think it has, resonance to everyone who will see it. So I think you've got a really large picture here that you've put out that started personally and now it's sort of all of us. Thank so you. that's that's very, very cool. Um, do you have something that you want to work on next? Do, do you have something in mind? Well, um, I am currently in development at Pixar for a feature. So I took the crazy experience of a short and was like, I want to do that again, but you know, for twice as long. And uh, I guess hopefully more money, hopefully the idea. And um, yeah, and this time, thankfully, I wasn't as panicked as the first time when I was asked. So there is growth there. I wasn't quite as like, ah, 
I'm, you're making a huge mistake. You know what you're doing. I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> a little bit less. I wouldn't say like, you know, enthusiastic confidence, but like, you know, why, why not? This has been fun. And why know, not? Why yeah. not? Oh, and something I forgot to ask you about was uh, you, I think got your head wrapped around the idea of doing this short and then the pandemic hit. Oh yeah. Yeah. And Holy cow. What a crazy, I, well, the way I look at it is if I can direct something in the pandemic, once we go back to normal, it should be a piece of cake, right? Or <laughs> trial yeah. by fire, directing trial by fire. And I think it really did help me to like, I don't know, in like an eye of the storm kind of thing, like laser focus in on like, okay, imposter syndrome and insecur insecurity is gone. We have to make this short. I don't have time to be like, oh, am I making a good choice? Or it, it no. kind of helped no. dial that in and give me a perspective where it's like, this is a great opportunity and I'm so fortunate to be able to work from home and like, this is a fun thing that I get to do in the middle of this uncertain time. So it was like, a, 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 I'm so thankful that I had this to do during the, the pandemic. I, that's the way I choose to look at it. I mean, a once in a lifetime opportunity, really. I mean, it, yeah. it is, it was an opportunity. It made us be more creative and efficient right. and all these things. Well, congratulations. I just love it. Thank you. Thank you for making that. And I'm so glad that it reflects your personality because you're a lot of fun. Thank you.